All right, good morning, YouTube, Facebook, or what have you. Uh, this video, I am going to cover something that I, uh, I overlooked on my last one about uh, depression, anxiety, panic, and post-traumatic stress disorder. This is a more so a request. Uh, a friend threw out there asking me what I thought about it and if I was familiar with it. And that has to do with... Uh, SAD, which is SAD, uh, Seasonal Affective Disorder, the Seasonal Blues. Uh, whew, yeah, I don't know how I overlooked that because I get that too. And I've done, I've done a little reading about it, and it appears that it is most common in, uh, well, of course, in the wintertime and in regions that have long winter and months uh, and long nights where the sun goes down early and all that crap. Now with me, um, I'm not certain how really early in the season it affects me. Uh, but I do know that it hits hard in March and April here in Wisconsin. And that is pretty much because uh, it's there it's it's in the middle of everything it's not winter and it's not spring and personally my favorite season is spring where everything is coming back to life and it smells good and it smells green and all that and uh it's not the longing for spring that puts me down it is that dreadful overcast that hangs around in these uh midwestern states now the gal who requested this lives in the midwest in the Great Lakes region, and I can imagine that, <clears throat> excuse me, I can imagine that the uh, winter seasons are much like they are here with the overcast. Right now, tonight we have an overcast, there's not a, not a star in the sky. But uh, that's all right by me. I don't think that's, uh, that's really affecting me yet. It's, uh, it's a lot of other issues that are kind of uh, I'm dealing with now that is the reason of my own uh, current blues. <laughs> well, a, what she asked was about when I mentioned on my video, on my last video about depression, anxiety, data, was about the isolation part. Now that's tricky. That is tricky because when you, when it's winter time or it's the colder months when you suffer from SAD. Um, you, all you want to do is go inside, you know, after your long, hard day of work. You don't want to look up. You don't want to stay. It's like living inside of a, of a snow globe that's painted black. That's what it feels like. It's like you are so isolated, even when you're outside, that the overcast, is, it just makes you feel so small insignificant, hopeless, antisocial, and uh, all that. You just want to, and the irony about it is you want to just go in and close the curtains and get under the covers and just isolate yourself, you know, which is just like compounding the, the existing issue. It's just, it seems it would make it worse, which I think it does. The answer to that, I don't know. Um, for that, uh, it would be, I think, a doctor. <clears throat> that would be something like, you know, you, you don't take my, anything I say here is professional, uh, factoids or anything like that. It's just my opinion. But you need the weight off your shoulder and something like Xanax or something that could take away the, the hopelessness and the anxiety of the seasonal blues away and need to take them away fast and effectively and uh xanax is, is pretty much it's a it's a good uh it takes the burden off pretty good in my experience uh you know i don't know they could put other things out there but that crap though i mean there's so many side effects of antidepressants if you're a guy if you're a male some of them will just make you more depressed because they can 
if you are uh, married or in a relationship, it can take away your sex life. I mean, it won't take away your drive, but it'll take away it. You'll be shooting pool with a rope. You know what I mean? And uh, that's not very good. You know, that's not very hopeful. But <clears throat> there are there are other things they're coming out with newer uh, newer meds and such that will. They don't have all them goofy, goofy side effects, a funny taste in your mouth, and the uh, the appetite fluctuation, and all that. But with uh, with the seasonal blues, that is some of the worst. A little personal experience here. In 2007, January 1st, New Year's Day of 2007, I moved from Wisconsin to Phoenix, Arizona, and I left Chicago. In, in a just horrible, dreadful weather. It was snowing and sleeting. I'm surprised this, uh, the plane even got off the ground when it did. I'm surprised they let us leave. And it was just crap. And it was a horrible day inside my head. <laughs> and I saw a doctor. I have problems flying, so I saw a doctor previous to that just to have him set me up with a little something to get me on the plane. <clears throat> but still... uh that was in January, and it was all overcast, and it was kind of hitting me then, pretty early, before March and April, of course. So I get out to Phoenix, and I'm out there a few months, and in Phoenix, Arizona, it's 300 plus days a year of blue skies. I mean, you know, maybe fluffy cloud here, but a blue skies. 300 plus days a year. So March comes along. And I'm just the happiest SOB there is on planet Earth. And April comes along, and I'm on. What is different here with me? I am. Is it because I'm in a. Is it just because I love this place? You know? I'm a hick boy. I grew up in small towns out here in Wisconsin. Here I am in a city in a metropolitan area of four and a half million people. That's the only thing that kind of freaked me out was getting used to that the block I was living on was as big as the town I grew up in. So, uh,. Back to the depression part of it, I did not feel it. And then I, it hit me, holy cow, my seasonal blues are gone. They're just gone. So that's another thing is relocation. If they hit you that hard, you just might have to, to relocate to somewhere sunny. You know, I've got friends who live out in Florida. I wouldn't recommend that for the seasonal blues because I, in parts of Florida, it just, it rains a lot. And I've got friends who lived out in Seattle. Screw that. <laughs> That's no place for the seasonal blues. So, uh, what you'll need to do is, obviously, I would recommend to anybody who has any kind of depression is see a doctor about it and tell them your symptoms and tell them this and that. And they're very, that's what they do is they diagnose you and they try to set you up. And if something's not working within a certain amount of time, go back. You know, you probably will anyway, just for follow-up. But go back and say, hey, this is not working. Or, hey, this is just really working kick-ass. I feel like 100% of a human being again. Or, like I said, relocation. For me, ultimately, in my life, sometime, I'm going to... I You don't want to live on drugs. You know, you don't want to live on medication. And it's, it's just a pain in the ass. And you don't want to be that person. You know, it's kind of a drag. But um, ultimately, I, at some point, I plan, I do plan on relocating and going back out to the desert. Because that is just where I was my happiest. I mean, I just, I reinvented, I felt like I reinvented myself out there because of that happiness. Because of the blue skies. And I could just wake up and be in paradise. And it felt like, you know, Monday morning before work. It felt like I was on vacation. I mean, nothing nothing was a drag. It was great. So that's pretty much all I can really say about that. With the isolation part, man, you can't, it's hard, like I said, it's hard to get away from. You can't, when you're living under a, uh, inside of a snow globe that's painted black, that is just, man, it is just horrible. It's horrible. It is like the crappiest feeling because all you do is go in, then you watch TV, then you eat your blues away or, you know, maybe self-medicate or something. You don't want to self-medicate and get drunk because that's that's just going to make another issue. 
so uh, one medical attention and two if at all if it's at all possible uh, relocation you know if nothing's tying you down to the, the location you're in in your gloomy little state in the in the Midwest or wherever it is if, plan a relocation and uh, there's jobs everywhere there's people everywhere you know there's help everywhere too and uh, talk to friends about it just as I said in my last video reach out and just stay socialized the worst mistake I would make is get really antisocial and isolate and uh, that's like the worst thing you can do and I am it's it's not always easy to change to, to to change that because you know where are you gonna go depending on your location if you live in a small town where are people well they're at bars and what's what's that you know that's just crap so try to find a social event maybe at a church I've got to heed my own advice on this one. I will be finding uh, a church where I'm at now, just to kind of get to get re uh, get myself back into good habits with decent, uh, kind, loving people, and uh, you know, stay out of the bars and all that crap. You don't want to even deal with that shit. It just creates more trouble, and it layers on and layers on things that you just don't want so yeah that's it for now i'm glad you brought that up because i can't believe that i uh completely overlooked it because this is something that affects me as well and like i said it's always march and april man the sky turns to shit and uh so does my head so um uh, gotta <laughs> That's where my bicycle comes in too. You know, I get out and ride, and I try to do my best. And I make a habit of, of doing that. I just try to make the best of it in my head. And I'm going to be doing better as I, I come along because I'm looking more into things about this and finding out that you need good habits, and you need good social habits. And, you, you know, a church isn't a bad thing either. So we are constantly rediscovering ourselves. If we're not evolving as people, as human beings and individuals, if you can look back uh, to your last six, 12 months ago and say that you are the same person that you were then, then you're pr probably not doing good. And if you're the same person you were years ago, you're probably not doing good. So as long as we're constantly evolving and self-searching and going on our vision quest and trying to make ourselves better, it is all good. So read, look at videos, look it up on uh, people's issues, kind of just like this. People who just put their hearts out there on YouTube and listen to stories and just know, I will repeat it again, that you're not alone. Okay? So just know that. Seasonal blues, they suck and they suck bad. But there's the thing is, like I said, there's help for it. There's help for you. And that's all I got on that tonight. So I hope I haven't sucked up too much of your time here. 13 minutes, not bad. Four minutes shorter than the last one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is you're watching this right now. God bless you. Keep on keeping on. Rock on. And be happy. Bye-bye for now.